Okay, so just a heads up as to the start of this video. It contains, first of all, a little bit of context as to the moon in question here, Phobos. If you already know about this decently enough, you can skip to the time that's on the screen currently, right now. Also, this video will be a bit heavy on the astrophysics, so if you have literally any question, uh, I will be happy to answer it below if I can, which will be fun. Anyway, let's begin. Phobos, the absolutely tiny and brown misshapen moon of Mars. It was discovered in 1877, which is rather recently for something in the inner solar system, and was visited by a whole list of spacecraft, and even photographed by some of the rovers from the surface, which gets more and more impressive the more you think about it. It looks like this, a brown, grey, rocky, bulbous asteroid, because scientists suppose it is indeed a captured asteroid which would also explain the weird orbit of the thing and the size. Some notable features of the moon, including this massive crater, known as the Stickley Crater, and these striations leading away from it, as well as several other dense and weird monolith-like shapes that to me looks kind of like a TARDIS. Anyway, so that is basically an absurdly simplified summary of Mars's biggest moon. Now, we'll tackle the thing you guys came here for, how that moon is starting to deorbit and disintegrate. To understand how this works, we can look at a closer to home example, our moon. It's a common fact that the moon, our moon, is slowly moving away, and that's due to a thing known as tidal acceleration, where gravity of tides on planetary surfaces can accelerate or decelerate a moon, making its average distance increase or decrease. To put it very simply, if the planet is rotating faster than the moon is orbiting, the moon will drift away and the rotation of the planet will slow down slightly. Also, the reverse is true, and the reverse is currently happening to Phobos. It is orbiting faster than the rotation of the planet, so is, accordingly, slowing down and spiralling towards Mars. Mars doesn't have as much material in its tides, but there is certainly a noticeable effect. Also, a side note here, Deimos, Mars' other moon, will eventually be free of Mars due to the whole tidal acceleration thing, and may even get scarily close to Earth. But hey, that's a story for another time. Where were we? Ah uh, yeah, Phobos is moving inward towards Mars' rusty surface at about 7 feet every century, which is a lot for something orbiting only 6,000 kilometres above the surface, or less than 2% of the distance from us to our moon. Even so, you may be thinking 7 feet back will take thousands of centuries, thousands and thousands to get even near to the surface. No worries. Well, I have two things to say. Number one, there's this thing called an atmosphere which will help slow down the moon further via air resistance, although it's not called air resistance because there's no air involved. And number two, there's this thing in orbital astrophysics called a Roche limit. This is an object-specific invisible line at a certain altitude where if the object passes that line, it will break apart due to stronger tidal forces than its own gravity, of which Phobos has very little. Yeah, Phobos is also thought not to be very strong, basically just rubble, rubble covered in dust. So, e hearing all of this doesn't necessarily mean that the moon is intending to break up soon, only that it will in the future. Well, I can tell you that it is starting to break up, and the evidence that of that I have already mentioned somewhere in the video. Cast your mind back to when I noted the features of the rock. Some notable features on the moon include this massive crater, known as the Stickley Crater, and these striations leading away from it. Hold it. When I mention those striations, or lines in the rock, most people would immediately connect them with the aforementioned Stickley Crater. And I did this on purpose. Sorry, I tricked you. But only to know, show what the scientists slash astronomers thought those cracks were related to the impact and subsequent crater. Except, on Tuesday the 10th of November, yesterday, as I write the script, NASA released a statement claiming that they have come to a conclusion that these cracks are not related to the massive crater, but from a focal point deceptively nearby. They now think that these cracks are early signs of in the inevitable tidal breakup that will happen once Phobos passes the Roche limit. 
This hypothesis is supported by the ongoing appearance of more cracks, indicating that the process causing them is ongoing, and the fact that the cracks match the stress models for the material of the moon. This is the first sign that Mars's moon is starting to break up, with current estimates placing the total disintegration around 30 to 50 million years in the future. Okay, so maybe not a code red immediate panic, panic, panic threat, but an inevitable one nonetheless. So there's that, I guess? That's everything you need to know about that. I've been Zephyr, so you can subscribe if you like my stuff, though only if you want to. And until next time, goodbye.